Yeah, so hi everybody, um, my name is Stefan, I'm from a German company called Brionda and um, we also joined this container bandwagon and um, we're now running um, Apache Mesos and Apache Aurora to run our on our container workloads. So this includes services but also machine learning applications that we run and in this short talk I will try to give you an impression or an idea what we did to kind of increase our utilization um, so that some of you might kind of replicate um, and get similar results. Um, unless, of course, your microservice architecture looks, looks like the Death Star. <laughs> if this is the case, I might not be able to help you because um, you will have big problems with tail latency and stuff like that. But for the rest of us that have kind of simpler, yeah, simpler architecture, simpler problems, um, you might actually get something out of this talk. So um, the first thing we did was that we essentially attached two labels to everything that we run on shared infrastructure. The first one is role, which kind of ties back into our um, business domain. It's like a unique ID for, um, for a unique ID of the business service or the project that we do. And the second one is just a simple environment tag that tells us um, where in the life cycle of a service are we. Is this development or is this already running production? And um, it sounds super simple, but once you start building dashboards and uh, allow people to do the drill in, you find pretty interesting things. And it's also quite useful to also educate your users because um, it might not be a good idea to say that you um, launch a big performance test and then go on vacation for two weeks and all the instances you launched are then just sitting idle. And with dashboard like these, you can kind of get rid of those. Um, we did lots of stuff in that direction and uh, once we kind of figured the basic stuff out, we could also enable Mesos uh, oversubscription. Here's kind of the idea if you launch a task on the cluster and not all resources are used, you can kind of launch additional tasks using this Slack resources. But if you do that, you kind of have to be careful because um, suddenly you might have overloaded a node with too much workload and um, the workload has to be preempted. And uh, in that case, your overall service quality might suffer. And what we did here is like an overall cluster view of about are all tasks that are supposed to be running actually running? And that helped us quite a bit to make sure we're not going overboard with this whole oversubscription and um, are overloading our nodes too much. And the next thing is something you don't want just a whole cluster view, but also you want like to know on the service level if you're um, still in acceptable bounds. So um, it's like we kind of added um, like service, um, uh, it's so like SLAs we have for our services. We can just make sure we have a lot for those. But um, even if you don't do a subscription, you still want to have those. And this is basically um, directly from the Prometheus documentation, so not much magic going on there. And the last thing we had that helped us quite a bit, and that's funny, was Nagios, <laughs> because um, we ended up overheating quite a few of our nodes, and the CPU throttled down. We might not have discovered that at least that fast without um, CheckMK, which is kind of funny. Um, I believe you could also get the data from Prometheus, but uh, we just hadn't had an alert to check for it. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. But uh, in the end, what's kind of um, the takeaway is it's not just for Google or um, the other big players to reach high utilization on your clusters. Um, even small players can do it. Um, and monitoring is the first step to get there because that's kind of what you need to get the insights to figure out what's going on. And uh, I hope you got some few ideas to actually replicate our results. Thank you.